Hello, my lovelies! Uh, yes, if that uh, obnoxious goblin intro was anything to go by, I am back, like the little goblin that I am, uh, to do some fan art and some art! Hooray! Let's do it! In this case, I am doing some fan art uh, for Monster Garden, just an insanely talented and creative YouTuber. His world building is everything I aspire to be, so hopefully I am paying uh, you know, worthy homage with this uh, mage design. He has done uh, several videos talking about the lore of uh, his world and mages, and so I was hoping to maybe explore what mages from other parts, unexplored parts of his world, look like. I started with a study of a model. One really important thing to do when elongating limbs and body parts and stuff like that is to not just stretch your image out. When I do studies, I always make sure that I keep those feet, hands, faces uh, proportional. Even if you're going stylized, there's certain things that just look weird or warped. What's really cool about the mages in the kind of monster garden project is that they uh, that this prolonged use of magic tends to elongate their limbs and make them stand head and shoulders over everyone else. Uh, I really like the idea of these uh, men, women and everyone in between towering over the general population. One extra detail is that they tend to grow extra features like ribs or fingers. I was finding that wasn't translating very well with the gauntlets that I drew, so instead I gave her an extra toe on each foot which I thought would be a fun little homage. Another key feature with the Monster Garden Mages is uh, this use of circles and repetitive patterns. Uh, he has talked extensively about how these in buildings and nature tend to attract mana, so I made it my mission to add as many spiral shapes as I could. She has a turban, she has this disc on her leather armour that I imagine being made of like wicker and uh, produces a spiral. She has this unusual little pot for her mana input which is covered in small spiral shaped coins. There's a, a different mana output that she's kind of tacked on elsewhere, which is a circular belt buckle. On top of that, her gauntlets are made of concentric circles of repeated plates, which I also thought might add a little something. Something I really love about Monster Garden as a project, uh, and a lot of dark and gothic fantasy projects, is the idea that not everything can ever be fully known or documented, uh, that there's a lot left to be explored, so hopefully I'm doing that here. Something uh, I did experiment a lot with was the mana inputs, putting them in the arm, putting them in the hip, ribs, all of that sort of thing. I was trying to do a mixture of practicality, it's the style over substance balance that can always be really hard to achieve. Uh, at one point I completely lost my mind over doing the gauntlets. I ended up staring vacantly at uh, haute couture fashion gauntlets just to get the silhouette right, and eventually came up with this kind of layered, concertinaed leather on fabric on metal appearance, which I actually quite like now that I'm looking at it. Funnily enough, another huge inspiration for this design was, uh, I, I'll have to double check, it's called something like The Adventures of Abdi, 
uh, or The Legend of Abdi, which was written by Madonna, of all people. And I still have that book somewhere in my house, and there is just something about these otherworldly Salvador Dali-esque illustrations in a Middle Eastern inspired setting that really started getting all those little character design parts of my brain fired up. I was trying to bring that gothic style and create something that would realistically exist in this, you know, monster garden world uh, without, you know, just retreading the same ground. I think something about fan art is you can kind of offer your own thoughts and your own appreciation for a very talented artist. While I am going over certain sections and going over my sketch layer and all of that good stuff, I did try and still keep things relatively loose with this one. I kept a lot of the nice texture in, I was using my references as a guide rather than feeling I had to stick to them very strictly, and I just tried to find what worked. When paying homage to elements from different cultures, you can see I've got things from Pakistan, Iran, Persia, French haute couture in here. It's really important to just do your research and make sure you're not borrowing too much from, say, something that is incredibly important or holy. There's no escaping it to a certain extent, but I didn't want this to be one big, uncomfortable experience for any one group. I think some of the best uh, designs out there are where you draw inspiration but don't outright copy any one thing, and hopefully that has come across here. When it came to laying down colours, I had this very strong idea of what I wanted the palette to be. I wanted it to feel uh, like she'd maybe traveled from all over and picked up different bits of fabric from different locations. Some of these colors I sourced directly from Monster Garden's own artwork, lots of nice reds that I felt were reminiscent of some of the character designs he'd uh, done or sashes and stuff like that. But I also wanted to bring in something a little foreign looking, maybe more in her garb than her color. I went in a little too saturated and then ended up, you know, you could always dull things down a little later, adding dirt, adding wear, adding all of the little details that make it pop. All right, that is rather enough of me blabbering on. Uh, enjoy a little bit of music and watching me colour in uh, ineptly as I'm often prone to do and at the end we will have a little bit of a story about our good mage friend here so stay tuned
I met a woman on my journeys, a mage from a distant land. She was clad in a number of vibrant colours and materials, of which many of the makes and patterns were unfamiliar to me. It seemed her clothing was built and designed to invite all manner of circular patterns, and the manner those shapes tend to attract. She explained to me that her purpose was much like mine, to journey, to discover and to learn, and she had already ventured enviably far from her home country. Fortuitously, our destinations overlapped, and we travelled together for a time. The many circular coins that adorned her manner input jingled musically, giving her long step and air befitting a dancer. One of her eyes was milky, though not entirely bereft of sight, and regularly issued forth wisps of bluish smoke. I have not had many prolonged interactions with mages, and my alarm was evident, but she seemed glad, if rather amused, by my presence. She was methodical, quiet and solitary, seeming to only make a point of speaking when absolutely necessary. I was surprised by her practicality and adept survival skills, having long assumed mages relied heavily on their magics. I dare say I was more of a burden than I like to admit, but she seemed to enjoy and perhaps even respect my academic pursuits. Once I felt more emboldened by our time together, I asked her about the nature of her unusual gauntlets. As I had now come to expect, she did not offer much by way of a verbal reply. Instead, as a manner of demonstration, she stretched out a hand, and the metal plating bloomed open like so many petals on a flower. Blue mist poured forth, and hung in the air as if suspended in a liquid. It glowed and undulated like a living, ghoulish apparition. After a moment, the mist straightened, focused, and streaked out in alarmingly direct lines. They slammed like so many knives into a nearby tree, tearing it asunder from a dozen pressure points. I was suddenly, jarringly reminded that my companion was, while now someone I viewed a friend, also a deadly predator, with her weapon always drawn. And there she is! Uh, honestly, this one was such a fun one to do. Uh, it took so much longer to edit than I intended just because life got in the way as it often does. Um, but hopefully you enjoyed watching this. Hopefully it has inspired you to check out uh, Monster Garden if you haven't already. And uh, at the very least, hopefully it's inspired you to make some really cool looking gothic tall mages because we all need one of those in our life uh, if you enjoyed this or you have thoughts or ideas or even a bit of critique um, please do leave a comment if you have the time and speaking of time i will hopefully see you next time